Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warmer 2, quick match and play. This time we're on the Sulphur River, playing as the Force of the Tomb Kings against the Force of the Lizardmen. And so this is a match that I feel has always been a, actually a relatively even one, I'd say. Um, both Lizards and Tomb Kings are fairly equal infantry. Obviously Lizards can run Temple Guard, but they're a bit of an iffy pick against units like Shop the Great Bows and whatnot. And on the mid scale tomb guard easily trading with Saurus, the very unit of stuff and then both factions are very monster heavy um the main difference i found is that lizard men obviously don't have the artillery pieces uh, and they don't really have the greatest shooting pressure uh whereas tomb kings can definitely bring the dac up but now with this change there are definitely some changes and i kind of figured let's see how this matchup pans out so my tomb king build here pretty standard uh i haven't played tomb kings in a while so i just had to go with the safety pick good old Ark in the Black. You can basically never go wrong with him. Uh, I think all the Tomb King Lords are very viable in their own ways, but Arkan is very easy to make work. He's got Spirit Leech, which is obviously spelled. It's very hard to mess up with. <laughs> He's got Soul Blight, which is really nice to debuff enemy armor, make your Tomb Guard, uh, especially Kepra Guard, much more effective at slaughtering enemy infantry. And then you do have Libra Mortis as well as Tomb Blade of Arkan. Uh, so you can get some Skeleton Summon and you can get uh, some physical resist for your troops. And uh, Soul Blade is also good because it reduces weapon damage. And uh, honestly, Lizards, they've got the, a lot of their infantry is non AP, obviously, and uh, does a lot of, just has high weapon strength. So it's nifty in that situation. Now, alongside him, obviously, we need to deal with large. So we've got a decent anti large core. We've got a Tomb Prince riding along on a horse to get it, give him just mobile anti large. He's got Curse of Jaff for that Rampage in melee. The uh, melee debuff. Blade of Satep to debuff enemy armor and physical resist. Tomb Strike for Terror. It's still useful against Lizards, even though they've got a lot of resistance to that, or a lot of their units cause Terror themselves. And then Guardian, if he's fighting alongside Arkan, he can buff him up and make him a bit tankier. Now, besides that, well, we've got three units of Ashapti Great Bows. These guys are, of course, amazing at picking off big monsters, as well as the Eyes of the Desert to protect them. These Regiment of Around Sepulchral Stalkers are pretty awesome, actually, for on a budget. They're relatively survivable in close quarters. They can definitely dish out the hurt. Uh, decent bonus for Slarge, I do believe 24. Um, and then base stats are pretty respectable. So they're a very, very nice unit, in my opinion. Uh, and you can get some good value in backline defense. Besides that, it's just a front line, two Tomb Guard, Kepra Guard, some Skeleton Spears, and more Skeleton Spears on the flanks, including the uh, King Nakesh Scorpion Legion as protection. Now for my opponent, he decided to go with a relatively narrow build, and this is something I've been seeing more and more often with Lizardmen with all their expensive new toys. For his Lord's 10 and 1, mounted on a Engine of the Gods, so he's got that extra Winds of Magic generation, he's got the port uh, from with Arcan configuration, he's got the port of Warding for that damage resist, which makes him even tankier. Uh, he does have the Death Laser, the Burning Alignment, and then he does have Transformation of Kadon as well as Pans and Penetrable Belt. So that's an interesting choice there. Uh, not seeing Wisdom's Wild Form, for example, which is, in my opinion, uh, kind of more useful, but perhaps expecting my AP missiles and figuring physical resist will be a bigger boon. Uh, unfortunately, he is going to be a very big target. You can see those opening volleys from Dushapti just shredding his HP. Immediately, he loses a good 1500 HP in just an opening volley. Now, besides that, my opponent does have a whole bunch of Saurus, Saurus Warriors, Saurus Spears, the Regiment of Renowned Court of Sotek. Of course, these guys are unbreakable and can just refuse to die for a bit of time. Uh, so, definitely some nasty stuff. Uh, he also does have. Two units of Cold One Spear Riders on the flanks looking to harass and get into my backline, disrupt my shooting. A Ancient Salamander here in the center. Probably the only really overpowered or overtuned unit in the new Lizardman roster uh, is the Ancient Salamander. Just crazy range and his splash just lets him wipe out a, a lot of infantry. And at the same time, he's pretty good against single targets too. So just a nasty combination of things. And... Uh, Tomb King Lords, very vulnerable to fire. Arkan's got a 25% weakness to fire. And Kepra Guard are also weak to fire because they've got regen. So that's definitely a problem. Uh, and besides that, some Salamanders. So normal hunting pack as well as the Umbral Tide. So the Umbral Tide uh, is perfect vigor, which is nice. Not amazing, but decent. And uh, more importantly, perhaps they do have stock. So they're going to be impossible for me to spot early on. Now that said, you can see over here, we are whittling down my opponent pretty effectively. My opponent trying to barrage me here. And you can see my Shopti getting whittled down by those Umbral Tide. It's worth keeping in mind. Now, sure, Umbral Tide, very... Uh, they don't have AP, but the damage output per shot is still pretty nuts. Uh, you still have 25 AP, 72 normal, and then some missile damage, normal damage mixed in there, bonus first large. And a shot only have 90 armor, so you definitely can get a lot of hurt going. You can see these guys already dropping about uh, 500 or so HP. 
And so I'm just going to retreat, because I know I've got the range advantage. I'm going to push out my infantry, zone my opponent out. He tries to get in here with his salamanders. They're trying to chase because they're not in guard mode. And they're going to take a beating from the, the temple guard or, or the, the tomb guard before they finally do retreat. Uh, so definitely some brutal stuff there. And now the Ushapti are free to fire, and they are just wailing on 10 and 1 over here. In the meantime, the, the Kepra guard here are going to dive into the uh, court of Sotek. You can see a death laser going down on my poor tomb guard over here, but they're holding their own okay against the Saurus. Um, the death laser is just going down there pretty nutty stuff. It's going to do quite a bit of damage here to the Tomb Guard, though not as much as you perhaps expect. About 2,000 HP. In the meantime, in the back, you can see the uh, Manticore is dealt with very, very quickly, and the Ushapti continue to fire. And poor 10 and one here, hit with the Blade of Satep, his armor sundered, uh, his physical resistance down by 22%, making him much, much squishier. Um, and he's just getting dumpstered. He's, he's not able to really endure. He's not getting into my back line. I still have Arkan as well as the Tomb Prince here to enter the I still have summons available if I need them. Uh, in the meantime, you can see the Tomb Guard and Skelly boys over here dealing with the Saurus. We hit him with a Soul Blight. Debuffing 10 and 1 down to 80 armor, which is really, really low. At this point, even Arkan's diving in to get a piece of that pie, swinging at him. And 10 and 1 is basically a goner. My opponent here is compromising by backline a little bit. You can see Cold One Speed Riders diving in, and they will dumpster Ushalti Great Post if they're able to get a good surround. But Akesha Scorpion Legion is in there. They're going to be able to be a bit protective, tie these guys down, slow them with poison, and prevent them from getting too much done. And in the meantime, 10 in 1 has fallen. He's crumpled here amongst the Salamanders. The Salamanders also just got dumpstered, and this is a big problem for my opponent this game. He has a lot of powerful shooting units, but they're not able to get into range. He's getting zoned out by my spear, zoned out by my tomb guard. Um, honestly, this ancient salamander here should have just been destroying these tomb guard uh, throughout the game with with his explosive fire, uh, and he wasn't. So I think a bit of a misplay there. End result is the salamanders over here are completely gone. The umbral tide is firing, but it's just one unit, and the ancient salamander is actually being routed by, off by mass fire from the shop the great bows and. Although these Golden Spiriters do get in, these this second unit over here gets intercepted by the Tomb Prince as well as the uh, Eyes of the Desert, just completely chased off the field in defeat. Uh, and at this stage of the game, Bounce of Power swing pretty decisively in my favor. The Ushapti Great Bows are still online. There's only one unit that's kind of mauled, but we're pulling them out of range of the Umbral Tide, trying to keep them safe. The Tomb Prince is coming and swinging with his Halberd. And in tow, he's bringing the Eyes of the Desert, who's just going to be able to start shanking these boys, uh, really messing them up. Now, certainly, the, all that fire damage is going to add up. It's going to be brutal. If my opponent had focused Arcan, he might be able to get some more damage. But we pop a physical resist. We're able to protect ourselves a little bit and remove these Cold One Spears from the, uh, from the fight. And uh, in the meantime, the Umbral Tide had kind of started start taking heat from the Ushapti. They're being pushed off. These Salamanders over here are rallying. Uh, they're trying to get back in there. But it's just too little too late. I think it is worth noting that the Kepra Guard, now certainly the, the Kepra Guard took some damage early on, 10 and 1 and all that sort of stuff, but despite being significantly more expensive and basically a hard counter to the core of Sotek, actually struggled a bit here. Um, only 58 kills to core 64, and this was just a straight up fight between the two. I would have expected them to do much better. Uh, but at this point, it is basically a game. We do get our, our Ushapti summon, rear charging these poor uh, Saurus. My opponent's basically down to just some Saurus spears over here and over here, and uh, besides that, there's just very little left, and uh, it's going to be a game. Uh, certainly my shop there crumbling, but there's just way too much left on the field for the Tomb Kings. So at this point, it's just the last two Red Crest Skinks here in the pits, uh, and that, that is going to be GG as my opponent chooses to bow out, obviously, <laughs> with only the uh, Red Crest Skinks there left. Not much of an option. So, personally, I think the matchup... <coughs> excuse me. Personally, I think the matchup hasn't necessarily changed that much. Um... I actually think it's still fairly similar to what it was. Um, I do think bringing big constructs now to try to fight the before with lizardmen or against lizardmen, you could definitely do a thing where you brought like a necro attack and you bring like some necro sphinxes and maybe the sphinx of Usef and um, kind of slug it out with the lizards in a mono and mono way, so sort of just beat the snot out of them. Now I think that's going to be a bit riskier of a pick uh, because lizards. Can now shoot you down themselves. They they they're gonna have their own DACA. But I do think the Tomb Kings. That said, I don't think the shooting billobs are really gonna be what you want to bring against uh, the Tomb Kings because Ushapti Great Bows are just so much better in that sort of duel. Ushapti Great Bows will dominate your Salamanders. They're gonna dominate your uh, ancient Salamanders. They cost rough roughly the same, so you're not really going to get a cost-effective trade there. They're getting much better range than you are. Sure, you might do a bit of damage to your opponent's infantry, but if your opponent just zones you out. You're screwed. You're going to get very little done there. And um, so I just think that's uh, not really the way to go uh, against 
the Tomb Kings as, as lizards. I think you're still better off with a mix of cavalry, big monsters, and a blob of infantry as, as the lizards. Uh, and honestly, Sars are probably still the best pick of the bunch. Um, I think personally that the uh, cohort of Sotek is just not very good in this uh, for dealing with Tomb Kings. Uh, sure, they'll do more damage to constructs, but against everything else, they're kind of going to get dumpstered on. Uh, I think, in hindsight, the Kepler Guard wasn't really well suited for fighting them. I probably should have thrown in like a normal unit of Tomb Guard, but alas, what can you do? Uh, that's the regiment for now, anyway. Normal Red Crested Kings can't do as well, so. Definitely a bit rambly, but that, but that is just my two cents there. Uh, I do think my opponent's build. Uh, while it's very cool to see these new units, all the Umbral Tide, the Ancient Salamander, and all that, I just don't think they're very good again, or they're the way to go against uh, the Tomb Kings. Uh, I think you're better off with other options. Um, I also don't think Croak, for example, is that great of a choice here, uh, because if in case you're considering him, <laughs> to bring him as the uh, Lizards, because Croak just doesn't... Obviously, my opponent didn't bring Croak, but I'm just bringing him out because I know some of you. Obviously, I've been streaming Croak OP or Croak is good in a lot. But here, for example, this is a matchup where I wouldn't think Croak is good uh, out of the new units that Lizardmen have. And I don't think. I'm trying to think of what they got. Ripper Dactyls, maybe the Regiment of Renown, like the Colossodons, could be used as disruptively. But even then, like you're risking. If your opponent brings a Light Mage, <laughs> which is entirely possible, your opponent could bring like a Light Mage and then. Kalida or something, and you're gonna get netted and shot the crap by uh, Ushapti. So, so I actually feel like most of the new new Lizardman units are just not really good in this matchup. Um, but regardless, that's my two cents. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you found it fun to watch some Skelly Boy versus Lizard action. Uh, definitely fun to whip out the Tomb Kings once again and try some new units I don't use very often, like Sepulchral Stalkers. Um, it's just stuff I it's just stuff I don't usually use and. Uh, getting to try it out, see what see what's up, see how it works is uh, always a pleasure. So, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. If, leave your comments, critiques, questions, everything of that nature down below. I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. And I will see you all in the next one. Why we're now.